and welcome to Joy in Our Town. I'm George Cope, and it is a privilege to welcome you into TBN Studio right here in Central Florida and give you another reason to put a smile on your face. We have so many good things that are going on in Central Florida, and Trinity Broadcasting Network wants to make sure that the viewing audience not only has programming from across the state, nation, and the world, but they want you to know what's going on right here in Central Florida, and they can encourage your heart with that. So whether you live here or you're one of our guests that's visiting Orlando, we're just so delighted that you're going to take a few minutes to find a reason to smile because you're in Central Florida. So I am delighted to have Mimi Regentine with us today. Is that right? I said it correct. You did say it Mimi, correct. Mimi, welcome. Thank we are so delighted me. that you're here. Mimi, uh, you serve as the program manager for the Orange County Office on Aging. I do. So you're going to talk to somebody like me because I'm one of those guys that's aging. We all are. Yes. We, that's we one are. fact, isn't it? You know, I, I heard that Orange County is the youngest county in the state when it comes to people over the age of 60. What, is, what, what do you hear about uh, people that are aging in Orange County? What's the, the percentage? Well, it's 15% right now, right now. Uh, of the population, but that equals 200,000 people over the age of 60 within Orange County. Florida is actually the, has the highest percentage of older adults than any other state. So if you look at our whole community, Florida is kind of um, the, the, the place everyone's looking to see what we're doing with older adults and wow. how we're helping them. So that puts you in the spotlight. It does put me in the spotlight. So you too. work then through the office of Mayor Jacobs in this area of aging? Uh, she is the highest elected official within Orange County government. I'm actually located in the Family Services okay. Department. So um, what is the commission? Let's just sort of define the Commission on Aging. What, what does that do? What is it about? And what services does that organization provide to our viewers? Wonderful. The Commission on Aging was established, oh gosh, back in 2001. And it was established because um, Mayor Martinez wanted to look at what are the issues affecting older adults and realizing that there's this huge growth trend and demographic shift that's occurring. And we need to have somebody and some county office that can look at the issues that affect older adults. So I have an advisory board called the Commission on Aging. I'm the staff to it. And then what we do is we look at what are the issues that affect elders and their caregivers. And then what can Orange County do to make that um, the need to help them easier? and what services are out in the community. So I don't necessarily do direct services. I'm not gonna do a meal. I'm not gonna do um, provide home health or home companion services, but I will bring all of those people together to make that informational package easier for somebody to navigate the system. Does that make sense? It makes wonderful sense. So what we're going to go ahead and say this now because you have a website and so they can go there and what can they find if they go to that website? The best document I have is called a Community Resources for Elder document. And what that does is it takes you through what are the primary information numbers, the elder helpline number, the 211 crisis number, the county's 311 number. Then it walks you through what are the subsidized services because if you qualify, wouldn't you want to be able to get some services um, for either free or reduced? Absolutely. Cost. So your website is sort of a 411 information place it where is, they can go full service kind of understanding. It's all aging. about information and to make your journey easier because when you go into crisis, you go into crisis and you your your mother's fallen, she's broken her hip, um, you've gotten a phone call from somebody that um, the memory impairment is and is happening and you just kind of look blankly and don't know where to go. And so what we try to do is walk you through that process of what are the big government agencies and nonprofits. So 
to, to really help you know who to call. We even go through the process of listing what are the different types of for-profit businesses, what's the difference between a home companion office, what's the difference between a home health, a nurse registry, and when would you want to call them? And then most importantly, how do you find out who's licensed in Florida? There's about a hundred home health, about a hundred um, home companion agencies, and there's a lot of people saying that they'll do those services without a proper license through ACA. Good. Well, there's a lot there, so there I is. just want to encourage uh, our viewers to, to make sure that you go to that website, you check it out, because there you can find information. Let's go back and talk okay. to the people that are viewing, because okay. you, you interest me. You said, we discuss the issues in our commission that are affecting the elderly. I'm interested, what have you sort of surmised are the great issues that our viewers are facing or elderly folk in Central Florida are facing? The biggest one is a lack of information. If I am selling home health, the only thing I'm going to market is home health. And so I'm going to try and sell you my services. Okay. And so people don't know who to call. They don't know that there's options available. You're in crisis mode. And often I get when I'm out in the community is I wish I would known that you existed prior. When my mother was really needing help, she has since passed, you could have really helped me. Some of the big issues are uh, dementia, cognitive decline. There's um, so often you might go to a doctor and you might get a five minute diagnosis of, of dementia. But if you haven't had a full workup, a couple hour workup through one of the diagnostic um, centers that we have, you might have something uh, like water on the brain. You might have um, severe depression. You might have a urinary tract infection that leads, that leads to delirium. And so you need to really rule out that there's nothing else going on. And so understanding that there are services, there's ways to pay for it, and there's help out there to guide you through your personal journey. Mm. Do you find that seniors struggle with um, getting help or knowing that there is help available and they're afraid to step out or do you find that they are taking advantage of the services that you are offering? I think for the most part, um, when you're healthy and you're getting older, your biggest fear is that you're not going to be able to take care of yourself. And so what happens is you try to hide that you might need something. Mm. And so you're not willing to admit it. You're not willing to admit that you're getting older, that you have trouble um, walking, that you have trouble understanding something. And so it's part of our journey is to tell people that it's important to ask for help. Because if you ask for help, chances are you can stay in your home longer than you might have if you hadn't asked for help and had gone into crisis. Mm. If you don't ask for help, you're going down a wrong path. Mm. Does that make sense? A absolutely. So uh, let me say back to what I hear you say. Okay. I think you're saying before you actually go down that path, you need to know what to do and you be do. prepared in that process. And then having people such as yourself in an agency that really focuses, there's a place to turn. So don't wait to the crisis is in full-blown situation, but find the ways before. And, and that's true whether or not you're an older adult yourself or you're a caregiver. And one of the biggest challenges for caregivers is their parents don't necessarily want help, but you have to know how to open up that dialogue mm -hmm. because if you don't take care of yourself as a caregiver, if you don't have the information to guide them, then you're gonna go into crisis as well. Mm. And that's really hard. Um, the sandwich generation where you have kids at home, you're working full time, and you're trying to take care of an older adult. Um, the average caregiver uh, provides about 40 hours of care every week to their, for their mother, and yet they still have a full time job. That's 80 hours mm. trying to juggle on top of having kids at home. 
could you give us some examples of the type of issues that seniors are needing assistance on and then specifically what you provide online that they can find solutions to? Okay. Um, first of all, let me kind of go through what online information resources we have. First of all, we do a monthly newsletter. It's not about me as the Commission on Aging. It's really about the new programs happening locally. It's about um, the new events. And interestingly enough, you're starting to see news media cover aging issues. And so we take the best of the best and we dump in articles from the Wall Street Journal, from the Washington Post, from the New York Times, so that you can kind of read some really thought-provoking articles that also talk to you about how um, you can avoid um, identity theft, how you can better um, help your mother transition from um, the home she's had for 30 years into possibly an assisted living facility. Um, we also do a monthly seminar series at the downtown library. The people that come tell me what topics and concerns they have and then I, I connect them with somebody in the field who's extremely knowledgeable about that topic and then also who's a good speaker. So some of the topics can range from um, what durable medical equipment is out there that can help you um, just kind of stay safe and, and do your activities of daily living. Um, some of the topics are financial, um, housing is huge, transportation, um, home care being able, to, um, one of the biggest things that lands you into an assisted living facility or a nursing home is not being able to, to take care of your uh, activities of daily living, um, ADLs as it's mm -hmm. referred to. So can you bathe yourself? Can you cook? Can you feed yourself? Wow, Mimi, you, you are just a plethora of information well, for us today. I, I am so uh, honored that you're here. You know, you're talking to a man that has a 94-year-old mom and an 88-year-old dad. So I am in a place where you're helping me. They don't live in Central Florida, but I am, I'm going to be checking out your website in the process. And I want to encourage you to check out the, um, the Orange County Office on Aging's website. The information is right on your screen. Now, we're going to take a brief break. Mimi is not leaving. She's coming back. We've got more to talk about because there are so many issues that are, are uh, facing our senior adults, and we here in Central Florida want to make sure that you're well informed. So please, don't leave. We're going to take a very brief break. We're going to be back with joy in our town. Mimi's going to give you some more reasons why you can keep smiling for living in Central Florida. So you stay with us. We'll be right back. Yeah. No. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving for information on how to provide even better care for the person who wants to care of you. Welcome back to Joy in Our Town. I'm George Cope, and it's a delight to have with me Mimi Regentine, who is the, uh, she is the manager of the Orange County Office on Aging. So Mimi, thanks for, and thank Mayor Jacobs, I who will. she is the one that gives leadership to your department and to Orange County. She does. She is a friend personally of mine, and I am just, uh, I'm confident that Orlando is in good hands when I know that uh, Mayor Jacobs seeks to really show concern for the constituents, the residents, and the people here in Central Florida. So we've been talking, in the first segment, we talked about uh, the issues that seniors are facing. But there's an issue that I think is becoming more and more significant that I don't know anything about, uh, and, but I need to know about it, and I think our, our viewers need, and that's seniors and fraud. Uh, huge. 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 So why would you say then fraud with seniors is huge? You're talking about a generation that's trusting. Oh, wow, never thought about that. So they believe that everybody's going to be truthful with them, right? Mm -hmm. You're talking about a generation, um, often they're retired, and when, um, 
uh, a good friend of mine retired recently, and then the market took a, a, a little dip. And um, I met her for lunch, and she was all panicked, you know, what was happening with her money. And what I realized is here's somebody who's 100% competent, but because she's out of the workforce, she's now nervous because she's not going to be adding any additional money to her nest egg. So you get a little unsure of are you making the right decisions because um, there's no way to really correct some of the decisions you're making. So there's also some cognitive decline that might be happening. And so you're not making good judgment. And also, if you're older, you have a nest egg. And so um, you don't want to, a, 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 a con artist isn't going to go after somebody who just got out of college. Right. They're going to go after the person that has the nest egg. Sure. Yeah. So, all right. We're talking not only to people mm -hmm. that are aging, but we're talking to children of those people. Yes. So I oftentimes, I know my mom and dad would, in, in a given situation, would not make a bad decision, but in, again, in a con situation, for example, a phone call that says, this is the IRS, uh, and you owe, and they think they may mm -hmm. owe, and whatever. How would you help children of aging parents to know and understand and talk to them about these kind of con fraud schemes that seem to be out there. How can they help prevent that? First of all, 75% um, of the fraud cases are coming through um, telephone scams, interestingly enough. So, so telephone is an issue. Telephone is a huge issue. Okay. Um, pretending that you are somebody um, from your bank, from um, the IRS, somebody of authority, huge, because again, you're trusting. Oh, you say you, you are who you say you are. The best thing to do is teach people to prevention first. You need to never give out any information over the phone or through an email, because chances are if you've won something, if, they, if you need to check your bank account, you're going to get it through the mail, you're going to get it um, through some other source. So always if you're getting those scams, go online, tell your, tell your parents if they're getting those kind of questions to come to you and you'll be, your, you'll be their online resource. So my mom doesn't make any purchases online. She calls me all the time when somebody has a quest, when she gets a phone call, when she gets an email, she's like, Mimi, can you check that out? And so just being that person and getting her used to technology to a certain extent, but also saying, hey, I'll do your leg work. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, so if the phone is the number one, are there other kinds of fraud issues that uh, seniors need to be aware of? Interestingly enough, um, healthcare, Medicare, prescription drugs is huge in, the, um, in fraud with older adults. Um, reverse mortgages. Wow. So are these legitimate companies that are doing it and they're just ripping them off or are they using that as a disguise to take their money? It's a little bit of both. Okay. There's actually a whole um, Medicaid patrol office that if the family suspects fraud with Medicare, that they will go investigate it for you. There's also overcharging for services. Okay. So you might be at a doctor's office and they charge you for a procedure that they don't do. Somebody might grab your, your Medicare number and just be uh, a scam artist charging for, for services and you never visited them. They actually don't provide anything. Okay. So it's a little bit of both. Okay, so, we, so the big issue is telephone and then other mail and, and just different kinds of opportunities. So I guess the, the next sort of logical question would be then how do, what, what do we do, how can a senior reduce their chances to be caught in a fraud? Um, again, never give your information over the phone, never give it over um, the internet. In Florida and in almost every other state, you can freeze your parents credit or you can um, over the age of 65 it's free to freeze your credit so my mom is never going to get a new car through a loan she's going to pay cash she also doesn't want another car but she's not going to buy another house 
So why not freeze her credit? I can unlock it, you know, mm -hmm. with a couple of days notice and then I can freeze it again. But that way nobody can steal my identity. Okay. So that's the number one. So would information like that be on your website? Because yes, I want to keep be. driving people back there we because actually, of the information. We actually have a, um, a wonderful document. We've had it since about 2002. It's called a Fraud Prevention Resource Guide. It walks you through what are the most common types of fraud for older adults, the most common type of fraud in general, such as car loans, such as um, businesses not doing everything, that, uh, not fully um, meeting their obligation. Um, we walk you through how to freeze your credit, how to get your credit scores um, every year, how to, what to do if you um, suspect fraud, how you keep track and log who you talk to, what are the different agencies locally, statewide, and then some national resources that you can ask questions, call to see how you process your particular concern. Okay. So I, I want to encourage you. Mimi is here because she's bringing a smile to our face because you don't have to do this by yourself. If you're aging, and I'm going to ask another question about that. I'm just, my mind is okay. running now as a, as a man that is moving in directly into this, uh, this realm of, of uh, understanding life. There, there are fewer years ahead than behind for me. But in that process, you can go to their website and you can check them out. If they call, is there a number they can call? Will they? They get, can also call my office. They can call your office, and so you'll get somebody to talk with them, and they can help them through if they're right. not comfortable in the midst of that. So, please go to the website. Mimi and Mayor Jacobs and the Orange County is providing uh, these services for you. Now, because this program, Mimi, goes uh, beyond Orange County. Uh, I know that as an Orange County employee that that's your focus. Right. If, if somebody lived in Osceola or Seminole or Lake County that's watching this or Brevard, could they call your office to get direction? Yes. So most of our services and most of our informational resources are for the Tri-County area because you might live in Orange County, but your parents may live in Osceola or Seminole. Or they might even live out of state and you might need some direction on how to connect your parents in another state to resources in that state. So we try to look at it from a tri-county um, point of view. There are a couple of things. Um, we do some brochures and some information just on the positive aging, the active aging resources within Orange County. Um, so when you look at aging, aging isn't just a decline. Aging is about reinvigorating, being able to engage. If, I, if I'm retired, I have a chance to do what I've always dreamed of doing. Um, and it's important, even if you are, your health is declining, that you can have, still be having a positive aging experience. Some of the best nursing homes in town really work to bring volunteers in, really bring um, uh, programming in to make sure their residents are engaged and they have quality of life and that they have purpose because we all need purpose in our life. Good. I'm a baby boomer. So um, I'm a child that is moving toward that whole uh, area of retirement. I'll be 65 very soon. And in that process, as I am thinking of, I'm not going to retire by the way, so I'm not talking about retirement, but here's my question. Uh, a person like me that's beginning the process of aging and realizing that mm -hmm. aging is moving my way, what would you suggest that we do in preparation for the process of aging? You talk to me, and in talking to me, you're going to talk to a okay. lot of people in this community. So what does George Cope need to do to get ready for the aging process? Well, first of all, George, if you've made it to 65, chances are, on average, you're going to live another 18 years. Oh, hallelujah. So, <laughs> you know, again, it's not straight decline. and sure. You know, um, you've still got a lot of life left. Most importantly, so many people just focus on whether they have the finances. Can they financially retire? They forget that whole thing of looking at what's important to you, what matters to you. Is it staying involved in education and learning? Each of the universities have a lifelong learning program. Is it going back and volunteering? 
AARP has a wonderful program that walks you through that journey so you can self-reflect and really kind of establish what you want to do, what are your goals and objectives. 18 years on average, that's a long time. There's a lot of things you can do. Do you want to learn another language? Do you want to um, take a job at Disney and, you know, um, have just some fun income? So again, don't look at it as I'm retiring. Look at it as a whole nother chapter. And how do you want to stay active? How do you want to create positive aging for you? And yes, we need to focus on our finances, but we need to focus on what matters to us as individuals. And I, I think that a lot of times we have spent our lives, especially in this retirement age, thinking about others. We and have. now you're saying it's time to take a look at, at ourselves and work together. Well, thank you. You've helped me, Mimi. I, I'm glad you came on well, Joy in Our Town today. Me. It is a delight. So here's the wrap up. Uh, Mimi has come from the Orange County Office Commission on Aging, and she has helped us. On the screen is a website. Go to that website. Mimi is willing and her staff is willing to talk with you and help you. Uh, is there a particular day in the month where they, you do the, uh, the library seminars? Is it always the same day? It's always the third Thursday of the month at the downtown library. Good. So the third Thursday of the month at the downtown library, you need to make your plans. Is it morning or afternoon? It's from 12 to 1. 12 to 1. So it's right at lunchtime. So you plan to go downtown and meet Mimi and meet uh, a, an agency that is there to serve you. And that's why Joy in Our Town is here, because of people like Mimi. We want you to know that you're not alone. God loves you. This community loves you. You have value and worth. And we don't want you just because you may be getting a little older like me to think life is over. I anticipate to live my life to the full until the very end. And that was God's expectation for you. And that is what we want to see as a community happen to you. So again, Mimi, thanks for joining Thank us you. today. We hope you come back and visit us here on Joy in Our oh, Town. Too. And I trust that you will join us again next week. Uh, Trinity Broadcasting Network is here to be able to provide services for you to know that there is help and hope in our community. So I've got to go for now, but we'll be back next week. And so until then, don't you ever forget, God loves you. He really does. We'll see you next week. Bye for now. This program has been sponsored by the Trinity Broadcasting Network, Post Office Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711.